This video was inspired by something that Big Clive on his YouTube channel did that I came across the other day which was to take apart one of the Chinese electronic hand warmers and uh, take a look at the insides of it and it inspired me to actually go on, I've gone and ordered a variety of them to see if I can deconstruct them as well and then improve them with putting in higher capacity cells. I'm even playing around with the idea of putting a 21700 or two 21700 cells in them and see if I can somehow glue them back together and therefore much increase the output on them. I guess if that is successful it'll be the topic of a future video. So in this one I'm just collected some of the electronic devices that I have laying around that I have at times used in the pocket of my jacket in order to warm my hands and they all are responsible for producing a lot of unintentional heat due to uh, whatever their original function was just as a side effect and um, it's enough heat that it does work in your pocket and it doesn't require oxygen and I've used pretty much all of these and tried them at one time or another so we're gonna have a look at the effectiveness of some of these devices just for the heck of it it might be fun I originally picked up this item that I'm pointing to here with the blue LED on it so many items on the desk here you're probably wondering which one is the one that's emitting heat and why and what is it so this is actually an insect repeller and it's one of these devices where you put a pad into here that's soaked with insecticides I don't think it has uh, permethrin but it has some other items um, because I've been making a very successful non deed insect repellent at, in the States it's called Summer Survivor for about a decade and a half now I think. I was toying with the idea of getting my own pads and soaking them with uh, some of the active ingredients from Summer Survivor sourcing these active elements, heating elements from uh, China and then marketing that. Who knows maybe someday I can still do that so I had them laying around and I realized they put out a lot of heat so I hooked one up and what you can see over here right now is it's been running for about five minutes so they heat a lot quicker than liquid fuel the area that it's heating of course is much less and we're looking at a temperature, I don't know if you can see this over here, of 234.7, so we'll call it 235 Fahrenheit. And for those of us in the rest of the world, 113 centigrade. But when it comes to heating element, I'm like mountains, uh, I think in terms of uh, imperial measurements, so Fahrenheit it means more to me in terms of conceptualizing the heat I can get. So what does this mean in terms of uh, the other factors on this? Um, great, we're getting 235 you say, but how long is it going to last and so on. Well that's why I have this USB device over here that measures the uh, current that it's drawing and it's pretty consistently been measuring three quarters of an amp. Point, right now it's showing 0.73 milliamps or 730 milliamps excuse me and we're looking at a voltage of 4.98 and um, of course the trouble with uh, using and so what we've got here is an 18650 cell in a standard uh, power pack that you might use for charging your phone or your a GPS or whatever in the field. I like these ones because if I'm in the backcountry or on a multi-day hike and I need to charge my inReach or phone, these are very light, small, easy to carry and I can use standard 18650 cells in them. 
I think when I've stuck this in my pocket, uh, it's gone to somewhere between two and three hours. It's unlikely you've got one of these laying around the house, but some of you may have that similar device that is awfully overpriced and uh, it's the one that is very common in outdoor equipment stores. I've often thought that this could be modified as well. Uh, the difference being between those because that is working on a combustible fuel it's going to require oxygen in your pocket whereas this electronic device does not require oxygen which is of course the advantage to all electronic all electronically powered uh, devices that produce heat they won't require the oxygen and you don't get any fumes the um, question with these other uh, butane based bug repellers are can you fill your own canisters um, the answer is typically no but as you know there are people all over YouTube that produce hacks for things like this and I've seen I think hacks where people have for example hacked CO2 cartridges so they could refill those here's another version of that uh, thermal insect uh, pad for example here's the one that we looked at it's got a cord on it this one is just another one you'll find that's common so I am not as hopeful for the same amount of heat out of uh, this guy so it's only been about five minutes but this has taught me a valuable lesson in life as you all know because I don't have any friends and I'm not a lot of other things to do with my life I can make these videos but even this is waiting for this thing to heat up is too boring for me carried away about so we'll uh, stop this one now almost everybody has a flashlight of some sort laying around that they can put in their pocket however they're not all created equal this is a convoy M1 that uh, I used to produce these in order to support uh, search and rescue activities and for guides and um, the reason being is they draw a little more power and I'll show you why in a minute they also use the 18650 cell and uh, you can buy these the, the, the case is called a host in the flashlight community and if you want more information on these sorts of things budget light forum is a great place to go and participate so you get this host and then you put in your own driver and your own uh, MC PCB I believe it is which is on the other side and I'll explain what those are in a minute and it's because of those two items that this flashlight does produce heat heat and the other thing I like about it is these radiant fins for cooling which also work well for dissipating the heat in your pocket. So the heart of an LED flashlight is something called the pill and on one side of the pill we have the LED and on the other side we have the driver and there's a couple of considerations for a flashlight that produces a lot of heat and this one it uh, is set up in such a way that it is a 3.04 amp version of this driver and it's probably the most popular driver on the planet it's the Nanjik 105C <clears throat> now the 3 amp you can tell this is the 3 amp version because you'll see these four chips here that's the secret here if you're looking for a light to buy online and um, there are convoys available that you can buy pre-configured with these drivers in them <clears throat> this is what you're going to want to find in order to produce the most heat if you buy a normal uh, cheap budget Chinese LED flashlight you probably won't be getting uh, copper NCPCB which is what this noctagon is 
um, they typically will have an aluminum one. Um, the good thing about the copper is, is they take higher heat values and dissipate them really well. And that's of course something you're going to want if you're going to be wanting to heat it. And so you can see that, and these noctagons, then you can stipulate the uh, LED that is on them. And on this one, I believe what I've got is an XML2. However, you could also uh, use one binned to the specs that you want for either uh, high CRI value, which is color rendition index. And um, you could get them uh, as an XPG2, for example. Uh, these guys will take XPGs. Um, they'll even take a Nichia 219 LED, but I don't know what kind of current you're going to drive those at. And you can see on the other side of here, this is the copper as opposed to aluminum. So that's the things that you're going to be looking for if you're going to order one of these convoys from a Chinese seller. You want a convoy M1 host, and what you want for the driver is going to be this uh, it's also called an 8 times AMC 7135 four group uh, 2 to 5 mode circuit driver and again the NAN JG 105 C and typically these uh, are about three dollars US and uh, the price on these guys is just a couple of bucks without the LED on them but then of course you're gonna have to flow solder your own LED on and for doing that that's a more difficult process I had to get a special hot plate and experiment with flow soldering you're probably just going to want to buy the whole flashlight as one assembled item it's taken this convoy probably about half an hour to work its way up to this temperature but now it has gotten to above 135 which this is about the same temperature that <coughs> you could normally expect from your Zippo or your butterfly and it's continuing to climb so you might in fact have an electronically capable hand warmer already in your drawer and you didn't know it and you could just throw that in your pocket and it's getting up to 60 centigrade which is about the same temperature of those electronic hand warmers that they advertise from China such as the ones that are the one that Clive took apart um, and their maximum setting I think is 60 and uh, you don't actually have to buy one of those Chinese hand warmers in order to get something electronic that uses the battery that goes in your pocket and in fact those hand warmers use two 18650 cells and uh, it would go in one pocket whereas if you had two of these flashlights which I do you can put one in each pocket <clears throat> this is actually too hot for me to hold on to right now and um, <clears throat> the one consideration with this but I don't think that the Chinese hand warmers are any different is that the lithium ion cells don't necessarily like this kind of heat and that would be one thing to consider however when you put this in your pocket and you go outside and if it's minus 20 centigrade the surface temperature of this is going to be a lot less and that'll be a mitigating factor in terms of getting this thing up to that high thermal threshold that it's showing right now uh, I have used this in my pockets quite often and uh, so far I haven't seen any uh, detrimental effects to it Oh, one other thing I should mention about this <clears throat> these convoys is you can adjust your driver to have all these different modes so I think this one and these are called uh, ramping drivers so when you hit the on off button every time you press it 
it dictates. Now on this one I've just got the different light intensity modes. So it cycles between low, medium and high. So if you found that it was getting too hot in your pocket, um, just like the Chinese hand warmers, you could set it on low or put it on medium or put it on high and then the resultant temperature would be um, a direct result of where you've got it set. So for shits and giggles I decided I'd put this monster flashlight on that holds four of the 18650 cells. I believe they're all in parallel. So that would mean that if you stuck this guy in your pocket it might last four times as long as this convoy. So next we've got one of these pads that you see quite ubiquitously in terms of devices such as foot warmers, hand warmers, uh, you name it, pads of various sizes like this exist and they're very cheap from uh, either AliExpress, Amazon, eBay, Banggood, you name it. However, I haven't had a lot of luck. I've been playing with them for years. I've tried sewing them into gloves, I've glued them on to footbeds, put them in ski boots, had a power source strapped either on your ankle or whatever or on your wrist or in pockets with these wires running up your sleeves. Um, haven't had what I would call a sustained, sustained success rate with them in spite of the fact that you can see here it is drawing about the same amount of current as this guy. It's drawing, in fact, a tiny bit more, if I remember correctly. This one's 0.78 amps. Um, but we're not seeing a lot of movement here on the temperature, which is showing at 75 Fahrenheit, or 25, 24 C. It seemed kind of obvious to me that that first one has shit the bed, so what I did was got another one and I'm monitoring the temperature by putting the probe on the other side of it from where the uh, contacts were made on the other one just to see if this thing uh, had some kind of dichotomous behavior between the two different surfaces and so far it's not looking like much however this guy seems to be drawing a little bit more current at 880 milliamps but for temperature can't even feel that on my fingers. So now we've got this larger one which uh, is heating a larger area. So now we're up to about 81 Fahrenheit after maybe 10 minutes and we're drawing 1130 milliamps or 1.13 amps. Can't really say that I would be encouraged to use these and go to all the trouble of putting them onto a boot warmer. So in conclusion, before you go out and buy some sort of a battery operated hand warmer from China, look around in your drawers and uh, by drawers I mean the ones you pull out from a cabinet. Given the hassle of hand warmers, you can see the appeal of something that uses batteries to produce heat. However, you're still not going to get the advantage of uh, weight, especially with respect to how long you're going to get that heat for. And that's why things like the giant John E that produces 160 Fahrenheit for an extended period of time, which might exceed 12 hours, for less than half the weight of something like this, you can really see that appeal. And then even moving on to the most problematic of all the hand warmers we encountered, the Zippo, um, people will still get 120, 130 out of those if they can get them to light at all, but they are cheap for 10 bucks and uh, in my opinion not worth it. The high end, then you end up with something like the S Boston that consistently gives you 160 to 165 and uh, has the convenience of self-ignition through having batteries and uh, the ability to be able to preserve your gas or snuff it out by simply rotating the cap and then that occludes the neck and does it. 
I like these for hanging around your neck and wearing uh, in the front of your chest while I'm skiing on a lanyard. Uh, these are very reliable, one of my favorites. The alternative Chinese to the Zippo, which actually works better, is the Butterfly. Otherwise, pretty much the same thing. And one of the nice features about these little mini guys is <clears throat> if you uh, do want to tuck these into uh, your sleeve or into a gauntlet style glove, as long as they can get oxygen, the nice thing about them is, is they are going to warm uh, a few arteries that feed your fingers to keep the blood warm. And so as the blood pulses through your radial artery or perhaps even your ulnar artery, which is over on the other side or other surface over here, um, it's going to warm that blood as it's heading down into your uh, digital arteries or your uh, the radial artery that does your index finger, of course, as you know. So um, that's another consideration. You, you, of course, you could put something electronic in there, but if you do want to warm the blood, you don't have to have something here. Um, keep in mind that the blood is going past here in order to reach your hand and um, consider doing that. So these guys work well for that purpose as well.